my gravy granules to avoid all gloom and doom on the channel here I am to give you my opinion on what I think will be the last five characters in Maso Stars. Maso Stars is a game that I've sort of been avoiding because you know reasons this video you know would have been earlier but a I was waiting for Koei's broadcast on the 26th to see if they would in fact reveal the last five characters and b I've been kind of ill so if I do sound a bit si uh, so if I do sound a bit different in this video um, that'll be why so boo hoo to me um, I'll just quickly cover the broadcast the broadcast was pretty good they showed off some gameplay in the intro to the game it's um it's very Hyrule Warriors esque um, you know life bar at the top dodging locking on bigger enemies mixed in with peons ridiculous character move sets etc etc so I think they've taken a page out of one of the best Maso games so the characters I think they will add will be mostly well entirely down to my opinion I will have a separate little list at the end of characters I would have liked to have seen but have no chance of being added because those characters aren't popular with the Japanese polls um, polls is in a gauge of opinion and not uh, Japanese Polish people <laughs> Speaking of polls, the poll that Koei held for this game are for DLC characters, which means Guojia and Zushu will no doubt be added into the game. They were near the top, I think. Unless I'm thinking of a different poll, but, you know, whatever. Anyway, that's enough of that. There are three girls and two guys left to be revealed, judging by the postcards that will come with the Treasure Box Special Edition of the game. I'd also like to know, if you disagree with my picks, feel free to piss and moan about it in the comments, or even better, make your own fucking list. Fuck right off and die, you miserable fucking torso. So here we are with the most likely characters. Uh, number one, Takatora Todo. Now, Takatora Todo is an incredibly popular character among the Japanese fan base. Probably because he looks like he should be part of a boy band, so he fits into the pretty boy group along with the majority of the male cast so far. The reason I think could be added here, like I said, he's super popular. He's among the top three characters in the series, along with Mitsunari and Yoshitsugu, and was one of the non new characters to get their own story in Samurai Warriors 4 2, the others being Mitsunari, Nautora, and Gracia, which obviously two of those are already in Maso Stars. Another reason would be that he evens out the other Samurai Warriors characters. By that I mean if he's added they have two Eastern Army officers and two Western Army officers and they also have one character from each moveset type in the game so normal, hyper, charge and special. Not that I would imagine that would have any effect over the combat in the game but still it's just a point to take note of. In addition to his moveset he would be the only character shown thus far to use ice as their element. The other characters shown either have wind, lightning or fire like Zhao Yun uses wind, Naotori uses wind, Yukimura uses fire and Mitsunari uses lightning. Those are just examples from the Dynasty Warriors and Samurai Warriors characters there. Finally, he is just interesting. As everyone knows, he's a character that served seven different lords across his life. He's a character who fights to prove his worth to people and is always eager to do the best for Ieyasu and Nagamasa, or well, any of his lords really. Though his ideas don't match with his friends, he always marches towards his goals for their sake. He also always sees the bigger picture which is the opposite to Mitsunari, which is a recurring theme in Samurai Warriors 4 and its spin-offs, the calm and collected character. And it'd be an interesting situation for him to be put in where he doesn't actually serve multiple lords, where his opinion will be changed by the characters he comes across, not just the person he serves. So that's my uh, reason for number one. Number two, Ayane. So Ayane is a character that's already appeared in many games, either as a guest character or as one that actually adds to the story, arguably the second face of Dead or Alive. She's appeared in her home series, Dead or Alive, as well as Ninja Gaiden, Warriors Orochi, and even Senran Kagura as a DLC character. I also believe she's in a horror game as a skin or something. I think it's on the Wii U, but maybe I, I don't know. Anyway, her addition to me is inevitable. She's a fan favourite as far as I know. She has a deep connection to two of the existing characters, Hayabusa and her half-sister Kasumi, as well as having a unique tag intro with uh, Honoka, or Honkers as everyone calls her, because she has massive tits. Her ties with Kasumi is something that Koei will always run back to, you know, the love-hate relationship between them, Hunter and the Hunted. She was the first Dead or Alive character, along with Hayabusa, to appear in Warriors Orochi, and she had her own chapters in Ninja Gaiden 3. 
uh, well, the Wii U version anyway. Hopefully she won't be like the other dead or alive girls in the game, hopefully she uses her dual Kodachis instead of her fist. To be honest, I wonder how that would even work with her moveset from Dead or Alive. She's a character whose fighting style is all about back-facing strikes, which only really works one versus one. I mean, how is it a backstrike if you're surrounded? So I'd like to see her added. Uh, be nice to have somebody with a hair colour that isn't brown, or black, or blue, or red, <laughs> or whatever. Add her because she's fit. Um, number three, a Jahudun, uh, the most popular character in the Wei faction, well, prior to the addition of Guojia. His addition would be great for several reasons. Firstly, a Wei character, so we have, so now we only need a Wu character. Second, he's popular, even with his stupid hair and his sometimes questionable costume designs. Thirdly, he's a rough looking character, so kind of like Lu Bu. All the other males in the game are shaven except for Zo Sang who has a goatee. So it'd be nice to not have a pretty boy as it were and obviously he is missing an eye. Everyone thinks of a Jahudun when you think of a uh, well, a warrior with a missing eye. Well that or Masamune from Sengoku Basara. Fourth, he's just a badass in general. I mean he eats his own eye. His moveset is brutal. I mean it's slow and powerful so he's not a nimble character like most of what I've seen so far with the exception of Oka, or whatever her fucking name is. Finally, he is a character to go up against Lu Bu and Zhao Yun. He's a massive part of the Battle of Sha Pi. In the last couple of games, he's always the one to round up Lu Bu in his last cutscenes. And as of Dynasty War 7, he's in the game's openings as one of Zhao Yun's opponents. Personally, I'd like to see him in because he was the first Wei character I played as, and he's just like a badass big brother. He is the character you think of when you think of Wei. Well, maybe other than Sai Psy. And I don't think they're going to add Sai P. But, you know, whatever they might do. Number four, Arnis from... I think that's how you pronounce the name anyway. From Knights of Azure. So, for those of you who don't know, Arnis is the main character in Knights of Azure. I'm sure of her addition because... Well, some pretty dumb reasons, to be honest. Firstly, they're making a figure of her. Now, that might seem weird, but Koei... Gust and Tecmo are pretty stingy when it comes to merchandise like figures, which they could make an absolute killing from. I mean, the range of characters they have, why why wouldn't they? They've made figures for guess who though? Yes, you'd be right, Wang Yuanji and now Tora, two characters from this game. So she must hold some ground as a popular character to me. Second, her fighting style could be interesting because she's part monster slash demon, whatever you want to call it. So you can have a calm and collected moveset in her normal form as the knight and then mix in demonic and menacing movesets for her demon form. That'd be quite interesting. I'd like to add I've never played Knights of Azure so I don't really know. It's probably a game I'll get around to playing in like five years when it's £2.50 on a Steam sale. Thirdly, her edition could boost two things. The PC release of Knights of Azure which uh, judging by some friends on my Steam list, it's already out. Which, because obviously she's the main character, they could promote it that way. Or to promote Knights of Azure 2, which would be pretty weird because they haven't announced the date yet. And she's not in it, so whatever. For the last spot, um, this is one I'm not really sure of, but number 5, obviously it's going to be a female, because we've already done two males and two females so far, but number 5, uh, my wild card as it were, Sun Shang Xiang. Now Sun Shang isn't the most popular character, her current position is 40th out of 80 odd characters in Dynasty Warriors, but popularity isn't everything as we've seen with Lu Bu and Zo Sang, which is entirely hypocritical of the points I've done for the last four characters, a uh, nice bit of cognitive dissonance there if you will. I'm sure people were shouting at the rooftops for Zo Sang to be added, and yes, I know he's in to promote Dynasty Warriors 9. Well, he's in this game which no one will really care about when more details of Dynasty Warriors 9 comes out, but anyhow. Sun Shang Shang's ties to Shu would be the most likely reason to add her, and she seems to be the face of Wu. Well, to me, anyway. Okay, so let me put it to you this way. What character do you think of when you think of Wu? I think it's quite hard to say because they have three rulers in a short time compared to the other factions. 
and they're not massively involved in Romance of the Three Kingdoms as Wei or Shu. Well, not after Fan Castle anyway, or Fon Castle as it were. I think she's also pretty popular with the Koei staff, which is weird to say. She's in many of the bonuses you get with treasure boxes, pens, light up crystal thingies, whatever you want to fucking call it, it'll be on the screen, it's uh, my, my one of those. And you may not have noticed, but she is the character in Warriors Orochi 3 with the most stages as a recommended character, which is kind of surprising. Actually, I don't actually have any evidence for that, but it's either between her or Kai. So, mm -hmm. She also plays quite a large role in that series too. Well, in Warriors Orochi 1 and 3 she does anyway. Another reason to add her would be that her moveset has massive potential. Because she's known to use two weapons, wheels and her bow, which Koei could always expand on without the restrictions of the stupid fucking weapon switching from Dynasty Warriors 7 and 8. It'd be nice to see a character that doesn't use a sword, spear, their fists, or have some fucking stupid gimmick like, you know, summoning trains in this game. But there we go, that is my uh, list of the five characters I think will be the last editions. If I'm right about all five, I will film myself wanking and upload it to YouTube and then get an immediate ban. Actually no, I don't know what I'll do if I get all, all five right. I mean I'll be incredibly smug if all five are right. I reckon I reckon at least two of those will be right, Ayane at least. So other characters I would have liked to have seen which have uh, basically no chance either because of you know copyright issues or licensing or whatever. Um, I would have liked to have seen uh, characters like Kai and KG and Sai Tsai and Diao Chan. Um, I also would have liked to have seen Darian from Arslan Warriors or Arslan Heroes of Legend. He would have been a fucking cool character. He's like Lu Bu, but you know, a fucking good guy and he doesn't betray and he's ultra loyal and he's his moveset was pretty cool. He um yeah, I would have loved to have seen him in, but um because he's a third party character he'll never be added. Same with like characters like Linkle, although that is a Koei original character, never be fucking added, but you know, also you could have had Lana from Hyrule Warriors as well, but you know, they'll never appear on a non-Nintendo system if this game gets ported to the Nintendo Switch, which who knows, probably will be. Um, yeah, they'll probably add them in then, if they ever do, but who's to know? Uh, the Nintendo Switch, by the way, does look like a bit of a fucking car crash, so... Yeah, there we go. That is my list. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Tell me your top five or top five characters you think will be added or your top five characters who you wanted to be added. Just let me know. Um, like, comment, subscribe, set your fucking head on fire, eat some batteries. There we go. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.